everybody, welcome to Live in the Living Room. Bobby Ray's Live in the Living Room coming to you live from Nashville, Tennessee on the corner of 28th Avenue North. And we are so glad that you uh, joined us. We have a great show for you tonight. You're going to learn about some two great singer-songwriters that have been in Nashville for a little while. A little while. A little yeah. while. Yeah, about seven years. Now, all right, so... Um, just want to remind you that this is what we do a couple times a month. Actually, we got another one that's going to be this Thursday. This one here got delayed because of a rainstorm <laughs> that never happened. But uh, they're here tonight, and I'm glad that they're here. We have Zach Loss and Yo. Matt Nagy. Yay! They're applauded at home, but you yeah. just can't tell. All right, so what we do is... Uh, I want you to tell our, our audience a little bit about yourself. So, Matt, you go first. All right. I'm originally from Pennsylvania. I moved to Nashville in 2017. Uh, I didn't so much concentrate on songwriting when I first moved here. more playing live, just lead guitar. But as we were talking earlier, after the pandemic, it just seemed natural to write songs and record them. And, Doing the singer songwriter thing, and here I am. Awesome. I am. Uh, I'm Zach. Uh, I'm from uh, Lake of the Ozarks, Central Missouri. Originally, I moved down here August 1st of 2017. I uh, decided at 35 years old, it was time to uh, start a new chapter in my life, and I've been had been playing one man gigs at home just singer-songwriter stuff, covers, and it was like, Nashville is where I want to come, and it's where I, where I went, and so, yeah, worked on songs, you know, took part in uh, Songwriter Nights, and, uh, you know, just tr trying to do it, so. And Zach was that you were down there maybe like two months before me, and he yeah. actually contacted me because we lived in the same place, we just yeah. didn't know it. We but met. We just a, never got together. We and I had seen him at uh, writers' rounds. Yeah, we contacted each other. Um, I think we met like a month before the pandemic. We because uh, Waffle House <laughs> is the best place to have a band meeting, uh, <laughs> and and we talked about let's 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 write some songs together. And then pandemic happened, and it's like we're we're going to get back there. And then I think it was like the following summer when they kind of started opening back up again mm -hmm. we played the commodore the same night yeah and i think it was from there it was history you know we got together wrote uh wrote our first couple songs we got an ep in in the works right now under the name of leggy nos yep. so uh, a what leggy nos <laughs> yeah so we had another band name but i imaginary what? eagles yeah, yeah that was me no, that's that's matt yeah okay yeah that's a whole nother story. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got an hour, so yeah. uh, now's your chance to tell your story. All right, I'll, t I'll, I'll take a second All right. that, and then we'll get All my right. lady Noss. So, um, you wanted to always be musicians. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What did you say? Since I was, yeah, since I started, picked up drumsticks when I was 11, I wanted to be a drummer like my dad initially, and then the songwriting bug hit me, um, probably when I was 16, 17 years old, I learned how, I learned that concert bells, being a percussionist in the school band, were set up exactly like a piano. And uh, I got my first real, real, uh, I, w I wouldn't say state-of-the-art keyboard, but it had, it had a chord diagram in the back. And when I realized this, and I'm like looking at pieces of music that have all these you know, letters above it, like, Oh, this one is a, you know, B flat, and this is an F. I'm like, oh, that's what these are. These are chord changes. So then it hit on me, and I started learning how to play piano. And I basically would learn the chord changes and find a song with those chord changes and learn all that stuff simultaneously because I'm impatient. I can't do one or the other. Uh, so, and then after that, I picked up guitar a year later, and then moved on to bass from there so 
Jack Still of learning. all trades. I'm a Zach of all trades. Yeah. Zach of all trades. Yeah. <laughs> so. And uh, and you're a league is hard player by yeah. by. That's my main. That's your main. I can play bass and keys and drums, but, but it, you know, you're that's way just way. I mess around with things. But mainly a league guitar player. My dad played too. That's why I wanted to play. And he was actually a professional musician as I was growing up. And he'd play at night, and we'd hang out all day and go to music stores. <laughs> That's sort of what me and my son did, you know, was we, I would take him to Guitar Center. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And he's a drummer, a very good drummer. And uh, so he'd always want to go and beat on the drums. I'm like, don't beat on it too hard because I'm not buying it if you break it. But he he loves the drums and he plays guitar too. And so he's following his dad's That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, start, I, start, I seriously started to play the guitar when I was like 11 or 12. And I really wanted to get a guitar for Christmas. And so, what was your first guitar? I, my dad, he told me if I could get on the honor roll, I could get a Gibson Les Paul. And that was the only time I was ever on the honor roll. <laughs> oh only my time. gosh. You still have that I guitar? I still have that guitar, yeah. Gibson Les and, Paul. Because my, my dad's theory was he goes, You don't want to start out with something junky, then you won't want to play it. That's right. <laughs> But so I, if if you don't know what a Gibson Les Paul is, it is a Cadillac of of guitars. Was it a custom? No, it was a, a studio. It was a white okay. studio. So it was it was your beginner Les yeah. Paul, but yeah. still it was a Les Paul. What, do you remember your first guitar? Yeah. So um, I convinced uh, my friend Will actually. Uh, know if I convinced him or not, but he had gotten uh, a Jasmine made by Takamini, uh, you know, beginner's guitar for Christmas. No, uh, hold on, yeah. well, Takaminis are not beginner guitars, well, I would just like but to he got, say. Gotcha, well, but he got the Jasmine, he's, he, so, he got, he's, he's got, he got this Jasmine, and when I'd go over to his house, I would learn and play this guitar, and uh, he, Brought it over to me one day, sold it to me for fifty bucks, and it wasn't until years later, uh, his mom, his mom and dad found out about it. You know, of course, uh, by that time it was, it was too late. I still have that guitar. I'm actually, uh, Will's got a two or three year old daughter now, and uh, I'm eventually going to give that guitar back to his daughter. You know, have it come full circle. So. Is he watching right now? I have no idea if he is, but I'm <laughs> gonna send him the. I'll send him the link later. Well, if, so. if you decide to change your mind, it's it's, it's yeah. You know, that's the plan so far. Will is uh, is, is internet, family will get that. The internet so. is forever. Yes, yes. <laughs> so cool. so what what kind of guitar did you say? Oh, you said it was talking me. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and then from there, uh, I think the first actual. Uh, guitar that I owned and played after that would have been a Fender Acoustic Electric. Fender Acoustic. Mm -hmm. So, and and then I just whatever I trade guitars in and out, keep them, get rid of them. But uh, I still have I still have the Takamini at home uh, in Missouri. Uh, my oldest electric guitar I had sold. It was an Epiphone last fall. Uh, I, I, I had that for like 12 years. I sold it two years ago to a guy in Hendersonville. And uh, Easter Sunday, I'm getting off work. It's like, I haven't been to Guitar Center in a while. Go to the Guitar Center down on 100 Oaks. And I'm getting ready to leave. I'm like, I'm going to browse the used ones one more time. And I see this guitar. And I'm like, oh, this looks like my old guitar. And I'm looking it over, and I'm, I mean, I'm seeing features on it that I recognize. I'm like, this is, this is my old guitar. And I took it up, I took it up front. I said, I, I think I'm going to buy this back, but I, I think this is my old guitar. I, I'm going to know by the case. And it's like, well, it didn't come with a case. Oh, wait a minute, it, it, it did. So he goes back there and he comes back a couple minutes with the lay with the case and it was a, an SKB hard black hard shell case and it's like that's my guitar. Oh man! Yeah, and so I took that as a sign. I bought it back from Guitar Center. Ironically, I bought it brand new in Guitar Center in 2010 and now 2024 I'm buying it back used. So, so but I'm keeping it. 
Um, I probably paid about the same as I did in uh, 2010 when it was brand new. What year? 2010. Wow. Yeah. I keep a I keep a list and pictures of serial numbers <laughs> of all the ones I've had. That's the way if I run it across them again. Well, he had, the, the the person who put the the new owner obviously he he actually upgraded and put uh, new tone and volume knobs on there, which. That's cool. You know, I liked it. It's a nice little upgrade to it. And I think he had a, a decent setup. And that was the Fender? That was the Les Paul. Oh, that was yeah. the Les Paul. My, uh, yeah. So, so you, had an, you had a Les Paul too? Yes, just an Epiphone, but it, it does so. trick. I love it. It's, it's, it's great. It's like a Mexican mm -hmm. telly. Yeah, exactly. It, like, it's, this is good. And then my oldest, my other oldest guitar is my Hofner Icon bass I've had for 15 years now. And now, Hofner is what? Paul McCartney. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You I have, got it because I got it because educate, of it. educate people. That. Yeah. So this, is, this, will, this will be your new podcast. It'll be Gear Talk. <laughs> Gear, yeah. nah, I think they already have oh, one. Uh, <laughs> they could come up with a different name. Yeah, but it, <laughs> Man, the sunshine. Really is uh, the yeah, Hobner's McCartney's type of uh, style of guitar. I that's why I got it initially, and the more that I played it, it's like like been the most durable. It's over here instrument that I've, that I've ever bad. played and so I use it on <laughs> sessions uh, I record with it all the time and play out with it all the time yeah so my buddy back home Timmy he's a, he's a Paul McCartney fanatic and I'm talking <laughs> a fanatic he's in a Beatles tribute band I think he's in oh, very cool two or three of them nice. at least he was he got the clothes mm -hmm. he's got the hair <laughs> okay, and I asked Timmy one day. I said, Timmy, I said, what What do you want to do with your music? You know, because all I know of Timmy is Beatles, 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 mm -hmm. Beatles. He says, if I could live the rest of my life imitating Paul McCartney, I'm like, okay, time to get the net. But that's that's what he wanted to do, so that's what he does. Timmy, play those songs. no, no offense, but brother, I, 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 you love what you love. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Paul McCartney's not a bad, no, uh, not a bad influence. A bad influence. Uh, definitely one of my biggest influences. Um, he recorded his first album, all him, played all the instruments on it. It's like what the, album was that? The McCartney album. Oh, the McCartney yeah. album. Yeah, um, maybe I'm amazed it's on there. Uh, but yeah, he played everything on there, and it's like That's so, I love the solo on it because mm -hmm. it's just like there's a party, he's like, it's just whatever, yeah. and it's like he can do it because he's Paul McCartney. It's Paul, Paul McCartney, McCartney. Yeah. and I'm like, if Paul McCartney can make an album by himself, then I'm going to, and that's what I've done. I've made an album or two on my own, playing every, writing everything, playing everything, from bass to drums to keyboards to guitars and. Whatnot. So you said you're from the Missouri. Lake of the Ozarks. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's where they they filmed those arc, right? Uh, down in uh, Osage Beach, uh, Bagnell Dam, they filmed exteriors uh, for Ozark there. But it was the main show was filmed in Georgia. I did not know yeah. that. That's mm -hmm. really cool. That's a beautiful and place. The, and the city of Ozark is actually for like an hour and a half south of Osage Beach. It's it's actually about 20 minutes south of Springfield. Uh, 20 Springfield? Minutes, 20 minutes north of Branson, so. Branson? Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's where I went to school. Was really? Springfield. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, have you been to Springfield? Yeah, I got relatives that live there. Do you know Baptist Bible College? I've heard of it. That's yeah. where I went to school. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. You know, our program is not scripted at all. We just... <laughs> go off like we're talking about guitars one minute now we're talking about Springfield Missouri amazing so what I want to do and what I, I I like to do is I don't know a lot of your songs I mean I know mm -hmm. some of them yeah, because yeah. you play them at the rounds and stuff so what we're gonna do is he in is he in frame still I am still in frame. okay you're still in frame. I see you I see you I see you um what I want to do is I want you to play, if you remember, the very first song that you wrote. Okay. Can you do it? I can. All right. Okay. This is Zach Law singing his first song that he wrote. The song is called Come Home. Oh, let's try this again. Songs on the radio make me miss you. 
It's, it's, I'm going with the cliched answer, but it was initially the Beatles. Yeah, I mean, me too. It, it, it was. And, but I've grown over the years to listen. There's, there's such a sea of all these great classic rock artists, even country artists. And, uh, you know, so I, what, what I'm listening to, it's like, okay, I want to do a song like that, you know? And so, but yeah, it's, uh, Definitely Beatles. Um, I think uh, part of it, uh, I could say that the middle section of Dear Prudence kind of, That's uh, kind of, what it kind of in, it. inspired me. Yeah, I heard a little bit of who in there too. Yeah, and see, and I hadn't heard the Who song before because I, I didn't listen to a lot of Who. And what, what was that? Is that substitute? The, substitute? Yeah, I had never heard Substitute uh, when I wrote this one, so. Yeah. I can hear it in there. Yeah. All right, so your first song. Uh, let's see if I can remember it. By the way, I just want to say yes, that's the longest first song <laughs> that we've had, and because you'd be surprised, uh, some of our our other guests, we've asked them to play their first song, and they couldn't remember. 
Um, so I'm impressed. It was, it was a good song, so it's like I always made sure to remember this. And, yeah. You know, I still play it out from time to time. I wrote that song uh, back in 02, 03, somewhere in there when I was first That was started. your first song you wrote yeah. was in 02? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this song I'm going to play is technically my first real song. I've had, like, riffs that I wrote yeah. before that, but and it, it won't be as good as Zach's. But. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty basic, but... song we call it I Can't Reach You. <laughs> so you stole it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why, why write your own songs? Why you just, write your own yeah. songs when you can steal? Yeah. That's great. So what, what now, you said obviously the Beatles mm -hmm. was one of your biggest instruments. Who else? Beatles, The Stones, The Who, Neil Young, Tom Petty, Bob Dylan. It's like all that 60s yeah. classic. Up into Did the, you like the birds? Oh yeah. I like the birds. Up through the 70s. Anything getting into the 80s, not so much. Back How about the disco movement? How did you feel about that? You know, not at first, but there's some decent stuff. Stay alive. Yeah, Stay yeah. Alive. The features yeah. were amazing, yeah. 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 And I, you know, I, I have a wide. Like, if you would look through my iTunes, you won't believe some of the stuff that's in there. Like, it's... I, mean, I didn't think you were going to bite on this. This was supposed to be a joke. Mentioned disco. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm 
Yeah. But you're okay with it. Yeah, I mean, as long, you know, if it, it catches my attention, I no, don't care. Yeah. I remember my dad loved the song, Get Up and Boogie. Do you remember that yeah. one? Get yeah. Up and mm-hmm. Boogie. Mm-hmm. Had the 45 <laughs> and played that thing all the time. I don't know what happened to it. I think I... Yeah, when I was when I was a kid, the only thing I, I did was it was the Beatles. Though. I was like, that, like there was a time like in my mind, like I was young, I didn't understand. I, I thought they were the only. Band. Yeah. And I would just play my dad's records and listen to the cassettes. <coughs> yeah. But, that is. But I, I, I what about Elvis? Yeah, Elvis is great. Yeah. My dad has the Elvis stuff. I just. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought that was your guitar. Oh no. No, no, I have a black you, dove. You have a humming. Was it a hummingbird no, or a dove? I have a black dove. You it's, got a black a, dove. It, but, but that's he has the Elvis. Mm-hmm. You think Elvis really played? No. I mean, he could. I mean, he obviously play a little bit, but I don't. I don't. No, he's not playing anything now. Yeah. Yeah, he's dead. He's dead. What? I mean. When did that happen? I mean, unless you're talking about the style. Yeah, I don't want to break your all's hearts out there, you know, all those. August 16, 1977. Unless you're talking about the style. Dying on the toilet. Yeah, I know. What it? a way to go. Yeah, right? Anyway, um, we went to Graceland. Mm-hmm. Jan- Adrian took me to uh, Graceland for my birthday, and it was great. Never been a shit go. Oh. I went a long, long time ago when I was like four or five. Um, really understand it at the time. You gotta but, go again. Yeah. Yeah. He's your cousin? Adrian says um, she did one so of those DNA tests and uh, it came My out. My apologies out there for the Elvis is Dead comment out there. Sorry. He's my eighth cousin. It's your eighth cousin. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. My Very cool. But we still had to pay for the tickets. <laughs> There are no. You didn't pull that. Hey, listen, I'm family. No. Listen, this is well, she didn't know until <laughs> after we went. Um, there are no fat pictures of Elvis and Graceland. <laughs> it's true. Wow. Am I right? And they they don't mention the Colonel at all. Wow. Except the Elvis movie display because it's Tom yeah, Hanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see the Elvis movie? I'm, I know. Did you see the Elvis movie? Seen you gotta see it. Okay. You gotta see the Elvis movie. I, I will have to check it out. Yeah, right. You won't go see it. I won't. No, it's on. It's on uh, Netflix. Oh, well, a chance then. Yeah. That's a chance. You'll watch it before he will. You're the movie guy, probably. So you came down to Nashville. Mm-hmm. And you played some in bands, right? Yeah, in bands. Yeah. How many bands have you played in? In Nashville? Uh, quite a few. Have you been there how long, you said? Just, uh, September of 2017. 2017? Mm-hmm. Seven. Yeah. August 17. And you? August was 17. So you guys got here right about the same time. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what you said. No, We've no. only been here three years, believe yeah. it or not. When I first moved here, I was jamming with a bass player. He literally told me, he's like, we don't consider you local until you've been here six years. He's like, why? If you move here, you move here, right? <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're paying the taxes. Yeah, right? You're paying taxes. You're in the deal. Yeah. So, um, what would you say? I just had a brain fart. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> um, here we go. About that. Play a song that you want to play. All right. <laughs> We'll do that next. Before I moved to Nashville, I finished it in Nashville. I know this song. We'll play this with the rounds. Thank you. 
before I moved to Nashville, and I just had that opening line like, riding into the sunset, rolling caution to the wind, didn't have much after that, but then I had moved to Nashville, and then I realized I got away from Johnstown, and that's the line, everything in this town just turns to dust, and I know if I stick around, I'm just going to lose a steal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, if we're lucky, we got out of there. That's great. There's nothing there. That's great. I love knowing the the background. Yeah, yeah. Of, of the song, because then it makes it. Makes, yeah, it comes together. It comes together. Yeah. So, um, where was your first paying gig at? I won a talent show in seventh grade. It was fifty bucks. There you go. There you go. So, then after that, I started playing with my dad gigging, and everybody in school was like, how are you getting all this money? <laughs> it's like I'm playing, playing music, and I'm like, uh-huh. So you what, what did you play, excuse me, lead guitar uh -huh. for your dad? Yeah, he played, we both played lead, yeah, uh-huh. That's cool. That's cool. You got a song to play for I us? I sure do, I sure do. So this is a... Well, before um, you play, where was your first paid gig at? Uh, my first paid gig was at a place called the construction site down at the Lake of the Ozarks. I uh, was in a band, uh, put together a band actually uh, in 2009, and uh, it was we were only going to do like a one-off thing. We just loved playing music together. Well, we got this place down near the Lake of the Ozarks uh, at the construction site. I think it. You know, back in 2010, we were like, I think it was like 200, you know, what? So, with four of us in the band, you know, we made 50 bucks a piece. So, but it was fun. It was, yeah. it was so cool. Um, 
I was. It's the best way to make money. Yeah. <laughs> in that group. Because you're really not working. You're no. Playing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I did. I I jumped off of. I was playing rhythm guitar, uh, switching out rhythm guitar with bass with the bass player, so he would play rhythm guitar, and then I would play keys on certain songs, uh, threw in harmonica on a couple songs, but primarily played rhythm guitar, so um, I had to show off, I guess, so, uh, so, so I'm gonna, this song, I wrote this about a month ago, um, Matt helped me out with the bridge here, putting the bridge together, and so this is called Penny. Recycling equipment, like big machinery. Really? Yeah. 
Where, where is that at? Oh, at MSS. It's right across from the Geoda Stadium. Oh, yeah? yeah? How about you? I uh, work for a pet cremation company. Get out. Yeah. Yeah. Been doing that uh, about four and a half years. Uh, started out doing the customer service. Uh, made my way up to like an operations manager. Uh, oh, man. No, it's, uh, it's... Well, you just learn all kinds of things here on Bobby Ray's Live in the yeah. Living Room. Well, it, it's a big thing. Uh, sure. Um, Let me ask you something. Just Are you trying to work your way up to working in a funeral home or anything like No, that? no. Um, you got experience? Yes, I do. Uh, I do like what I'm doing, though. It's, uh, you know, I'm helping people through a rough time when they when they lose a pet it's a member of the family sure. so um, so I feel I'm I can gauge people and sure get on their level and you know I'm here for you and you know we're sure. gonna take good care of your, of your baby and yeah so Adrian and I we used to sell headstones oh wow that was our job that's how we met back in uh, 19 it wasn't it 19 yeah, yeah, and uh, she took my job. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I was working in the office selling headstones, and 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 just like you, yeah, you know, we were dealing with families. And mm -hmm. My job was to go out to other funeral homes and get them to buy our stones. I gotcha. So, and then when people would come into our office, you know, we you know tried to call, 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 console, console. I hope that didn't go on. <laughs> console families and stuff yeah. so that takes a lot that, this does. you gotta man that, that's tough that's i can't do it i'm not, I'm not a no person. you're the recycle guy yeah i'm not I'm not a people person no no wow it's amazing what you learn about people. yeah yeah that is really cool so what are your other hobbies what do you like to do <laughs> no no you don't like to do anything but you like movies. Love movies. Yeah, I'm a classic movie TV junkie. Uh, uh, massive Three Stooges fan here. Yeah, just let you all know. And oh. he's never seen Star Wars. Nope. I ought to throw you out of my house. <laughs> You're lucky, though, because we have this plan. She need food yeah, yeah. so you can stay. That's good. That's good. Would you say... That you've accomplished everything you've wanted to accomplish so far in Nashville. I say so far so good, you know. What are your goals? My goals? Well, and what do you see yourself doing? It's a good question. You know, I. That's why I'm the host. <laughs> well, you know, I, you know, I could see myself. You know, wanting to get out there, you know, make music, I'd love to make it big. Play the big stage. Exactly. It's a great goal to shoot for. Um, I'm all, I'm about taking it day to day, one day at a time, you know. Sweet so, mm -hmm. so um, I know tomorrow I'm going to go to work, but I may get that call to go play the big stage. You know, who knows? So, um, you can you open know, for me. I could open for you. Okay. All right. It doesn't have to. It's a little stage. It's about this big. It's got axes <laughs> <laughs> flying around while you're playing. Well, I'm, I'm good at ducking, so. So, um, but but you're. That's what you want. You want. You know, I want to play it. Yeah, I want to play the music. I, you know, it'd be really cool if something that I've wrote or or co-wrote with somebody uh, gets picked up by somebody that can interpret it and do it better than, than I can, you know? I, that that would be just amazing, right. you know, to be able to sell a song. So, I have all sorts of goals, you know, selling songs, writing songs, you know, Matt and I, uh, we just, we, we click. I don't know what it is when we write together. It's like we know what each other. That's thinking. good. We just, we just yeah, well, got the first, it. Yeah, the first time we got together, we, just, we had a song made. Yeah, that's good because you know Nashville is a co-writing town, yeah. and they expect yeah. you to co-write because they don't think you can write by yourself. Yeah, 
Um, but that's good that you got that connection. Yeah. I haven't found that connection yet. You know? Yeah. I'm at, let me rephrase that. Rollin Brummett. You know Rollin? No, I don't. Rollin, I've, met him. I've met Rollin. You met Rollin, and I know you know Rollin. I probably, if I saw him, I probably would know. Rollin plays a song about going out hunting and stuff like that. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I do know you mean. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. Rollin and I just wrote two songs. Oh, that's good. And I... I'm not a co-writer. Mm-hmm. I've tried to co-write. I've See, I, I don't think I am either, but like me and him click. Like Every time we've gotten together, we've written a song, and then for the one that he just, just played, he goes, do you have a bridge? Yeah, I called and, him up. And I, I, I sat down. I, he, I, he just sent me a clip, clips of it. I, it wasn't even a full song. I sent him a bridge, and he's like, fix. Well, that's yeah. great. It's, he, I have to give him a lot of credit to jumping back into it. I have only in the last year written one or two songs, this one being the most written a month ago. Um, What's it called? Penny. Oh, it's just called Penny. Yeah. Um, And uh, the reason being, um, I lost my sister last year. And it has thrown me into a, just a wave of, depression I'm getting out of it and I haven't felt the desire to write you know I don't mind playing music I don't you know and you know several weeks ago uh, maybe a couple months ago I was getting gas before work and I saw the lucky penny and uh, or I saw the penny heads up on the ground so I had that first verse it's like I'm just gonna speak this into the phone and save it and then last month I came back to it and it was just I was unconsciously doing it. Then all of a sudden, I'm I'm writing all the lyrics to this song, and then I pick the guitar up, and it just everything is coming out until I get to that bridge. And then I called him up. I said, "Exactly it. It's like I've got this song here, and um, I need some help with the bridge. I, you know, I don't have a bridge for it. So you know, yeah, he sent me the structure, and he's like." Let's do it. Let's get this recorded. I'm coming over Friday <laughs> with the recorder. We're going to get it recorded. We're going to get it up to get it up to the studio and and you recorded and it? we recorded yeah. it. We recorded the acoustic guitar parts live, live in my living room. Bounce the tracks over to John. Can't take that. Yeah, we're going to get sued here. That's right. You're gonna get sued. <laughs> I mean, that that's what, great. Yeah, and then that's I went in story. a couple weeks later and uh, overdubbed bass. Uh, little riffs that I wasn't able to pull off when we were recording live, and then I did the percussion, and gonna redo vocals here. Yeah. And he gets he gets all kind of weird texts from me like, "Hey, uh, can you be at the studio five to play Mellotron?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What is a Mellotron? It's like it's one of the first things. Ancient thing that, synthesizer. Oh think, yeah. yeah. Think like you know how keyboards are today that have a million voices was yeah. the Mellotron was like one of the first keyboards that had you know basically cello harp uh, brass I know stuff. Stuff. yeah those are the ones that they sold They're, in the mall like when I was not quite when I not was a quite. kid you went around and you hear <laughs> you yeah, they, they were on they were on a tape loop and like if you're if you had like a string like it would Push it for like an E, 30, and it would lift up that, t- yeah, 30 seconds and drop it, and it start all over, and you can hear that drop. That's, uh, you listen to Strawberry Fields Forever, that's what that is, it's a Mellotron, that uh, flute, it's a Mellotron, yeah. <laughs> so, let me ask you this, as, as songwriters, yeah. are you lyrics first, or are you music, music first? first? Are you really? Well, now, lately that's changed, though, because like, like, I don't have a lot of time with working and everything just to pick up my guitar, so... Thoughts will come into my head right instantly on my phone. It's like 200 just yeah. phrases, yeah. and then, you know, and then it could just go from there. And then I'll pick up the guitar. But it used to be where I would just have the, the music, and then I would try to fit something to it. But then it's, it's kind of changed. How about time, you? A lot of times, it's it's mainly lyrics first. Yeah. I very rarely write, have music worked out. I think when he, when Matt come over, uh, the first time you came over, when we when we did gonna have to live with that. You had basically the verse yeah, structure, yeah. and I was just writing. I was able to just like hone in and write lyrics to whatever he was playing. So that was really cool. And then we both kind of come up with uh, 
the course together as far as the music structure and uh, he was going from major to minor chords it sounded so cool that F to F minor turnaround mm -hmm. at the end of it and so it was kind of like well this is kind of neat so basically you know I, I can write the words down he's he's got the music and then seize the day we did it from scratch there were no ideas no ideas coming no in. ideas and uh, and I, I think we equally both come up with like lyrics and music together on mm -hmm. it so it, it was just really cool same thing with welcome back we did the same thing there uh, another song she drives me was mainly Matt's he had everything but lyrics for a bridge so added I went ahead and added lyrics to that and then he had another we got another one that we're working on that it's gonna be a started out as one song but I think we're making a medley of yeah. it to close the EP out so um, so we're gonna definitely put a lot of work into that one. that's cool yeah usually when I write it happens all the time I'll be laying in bed and I'll wake <laughs> up in the middle of the night and then I want to write it all down, mm -hmm. but my phone is so bright. Right. And if I pull it out to wake her up, speaking of Adrian over there, she's sitting on the couch. And thank you, dear, for making the food as you always do. Yes, and the pepperoni rolls are really good. amazing. We have pepperoni rolls tonight. Yes. And I'm feeling every one of them that I ate. Let me tell you, that's why she brought that glass of water out so I can have my antacid pill. That's what happens when you get old, see? I've had a bad since Things. I was like 18. Well, I'm sorry. I haven't. It's just starting it's just starting to hit me. But no, in the middle of the night, that's when I got to get up and write. Yeah. You know? And then I just go over it in my head, and over my head, and over my head. And then finally, when she gets up in the morning, I'm already awake. Mm -hmm. So I got to run up and grab my phone real quick and write everything down <laughs> before I forget. And then usually come up with something. There's a lot of times I'm like, this is terrible. Mm -hmm. I should have just... Went back to bed or something. Well, it's funny. Remember when I had that Bell's palsy? Yeah. Like it was just bothering me to sleep. So I got up. I went. I have this big walk-in closet with like my recorder and guitars in there. And I did a whole song. It's not well, obviously not the drums, but I did. I, I did all the electrics, the bass, <laughs> and 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 I woke. She woke up. And she and she's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I was up on my recording." Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy what musicians go through. You know, yeah. it really is. They are funny people. So, so you, I asked him, what about you? Do you feel like you've accomplished? And what do you want to accomplish? I mean, I don't feel like I've accomplished everything I want. Like, I know, I look back on, like, since I've, at least since I've started re writing and recording, like, I have a massive body of work. But I don't feel like that's, that's an accomplishment in itself, I think. But, like, my accomplishment. What I would really like to accomplish is, I don't really care about like, being famous. But I would like to be supported by it, where I can just play guitar sure. all day, sure. hang out in music shops, and sure, try. yep, yep. <laughs> That's what that would be my goal: is to be supported from, so I can just pick up my guitar and keep doing what I'm doing. And then, you, know, you don't have to work a regular job. Yeah, yeah. You could yeah. just go and yeah. say, you know, honey, I'm going to go write today. Yes. You know? And then I'm going up to Guitar Center to look at harmonica He's, holders. Exactly. Because, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing it in my head anyway, so, you know, right. it'd be nice if I could just actually... I, I, look at it like, I look at it like this, you know. You know, when I think I've got to, you know, I've accomplished what I set out to do, I find new things to accomplish. So, like for me, when we get together and write a song... I've set out, I've accomplished my goal for the day, you know, whether I'm writing by myself, whether I'm writing with Matt, whether we're getting to the studio, it's like, you know, may not be the overall picture, but there's things within the picture that's, sure. that, you, may, you know, I don't know, maybe it's a philosophical place. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm, I'm finding new things to accomplish every day, I guess. That's, that's, a, that's good. Yeah. So, I the song that I remember the most that you play at our round is on, um, is it Highway 65? Oh, six, uh, 65 South. Play that. All right. Because I have one called 422 West. And this one, this is the, one of the first songs that I wrote for the, 
not one of the first ones I wrote, but the first one, one of the first ones I wrote that I thought was actually a really good song. <laughs> yeah, it's good. just like, oh, so hard. what did he do? He's like, kick the window out downstairs. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. So that's well, a great way to work part, the video. Part of that memory. You know? <laughs> that, honestly, Matt, that's a great, great song. Thank you. That's a great song. Thank you. Um, let's see. That, 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 we did that, we did that, we did that. Hey, you want to play another one? I sure do. All right. So, uh, tell us a little bit about it and why you wrote it and why you want to play it for the world. <laughs> so, I, I wrote this song 
way back in 2009 and back home I did a really heavy electric version of it and I resurrected it years later when I started playing out uh, and of course when I'm doing you know acoustic gigs I found a rendition that works better as a solo acoustic song uh, I worked for a few years making an album down here called Rhodes and I did this song it's called rain come down um, you know I really don't I don't know what the song is about to be honest with you but uh, you know I, I leave it to I leave it to the people that listen to it you but know you, make yeah, it what you with, want with, to make with it. the music to that song and, yeah. and the way you see it, 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 it you can it matches it. you know you yeah. can get the feel for it. you can imagine it yeah you know maybe it Maybe it's a song that conveys disappointment. Maybe it's a song that conveys hope. Well, if it gives you any consolation, Paul Simon don't know why he wrote Sound of Silence. So wow. There you go. It does give me consolation. There you go. Is that, is that the right word, consolation? Did I say that right? Always have to fact check things with our studio audience. So the song is called Rain Come Down. to be 
see the rain coming down, you know, yeah. you can say it's a spiritual thing. Yeah. You know, it, it could be God's presence. We need God's presence in this crazy world that we live in where down is up and up is down. That's right. Bizarro world. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, that last song that you played, 65 South, yeah. sounds like America. Do you like America? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course with no name. Yeah. <laughs> Sister Golden here. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that that sounded a lot like uh, I hear Neil Young playing that. I, I need a wall. <laughs> yeah. I've been I've been told that I yeah. I've had a lot of people tell me got some Neil Young in me. I, I Where is Neil Young? I haven't heard it yet, but I'll take it. You know, it's a good. Yeah, it's, I love Neil Young. People tell me all the time, you're like you're like James Taylor, James Taylor. James Denver. <laughs> you remember the one round that everybody was saying something? I sounded like Gat Stevens. I'm like, yep. what planet are you on? I was like, I can't yeah. sing. Oh, come on, it's a wild world. <laughs> are we good on time? All right, well, I guess that about wraps it up. We do this uh, all the time. This is a traditional thing. So all right. everybody say hi to my mom. Hi. Hi, I mom. Hi, mom. We love you. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for coming out. And I also want to thank you. For supporting um, the writers round oh, no and bad acts, you guys are always there. I think you canceled a couple times, and we do have black marks by your name, <laughs> but that's okay because you know. Now we know. And uh, if you tell real quick, if you have music out, yeah, on all streaming platforms. Tell them uh, Mac where Nitty, they can the find you. Mac the Mary Eagles, then Leggy Nas, and yeah, yeah. Uh, same here, Zach Loss Originals. I've got Spotify links. I just released a single two weeks ago called All I Can Do. Uh, getting ready to release another single, Penny, uh, at the end of May. And uh, yeah, and then Leggy Noss stuff just it just keeps coming out. So. Oh, Leggy Noss. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, where are you playing next? Any, you got anything lined up? No, I don't think I do. I believe I'm playing Bad Axe on May 1st and 15th. Okay. I tried to get into it. I emailed someone today about the Browns Diner, but they haven't gotten back to me. I don't know. Let me see. Yeah. Bizarre. Well, again, we want to thank Adrian for putting this together and uh, making the delicious food that she does. Yes. Thank and, you for dinner. And, yes, thank and you. our daughter, Danielle, for letting us uh, use her part of the house. And keeping the dogs at bay. They're not here today, so. But we want to thank you all for joining us. I know, let's see, there's one, two, maybe six of you. But that's okay. We're growing. So we should have about seven next week. So keep rocking. Thursday oh, Thursday night, yes. We have Laura Mustard, great keyboard player, great songwriter, and Kinsley Wood. He's from Colorado, just moved to Nashville just recently. So check us out uh, on Thursday, same bat time, <laughs> same bat channel. Keep rocking. We'll see ya. Everybody say bye. Bye-bye. Take bye -bye. us over with some music. Come on. <laughs> <laughs>